This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 851 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you, one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Horse.com's weekly horse health report on the Horses in the Morning show. The Hit'em crew is joined by the Horse.com digital editor Michelle Anderson and Dr. Jones to talk about getting the most out of a lameness exam. And we'll get right to our tip after this shopping tip from EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Glenn here with the Horse Radio Network, and I am with Debbie from Equestrian Collections about a brand new service that they are offering for all of our international listeners. Yes, hi, Glenn. You know, we have an awful lot of international customers, and we are trying our best to pare down what they are paying in shipping because international shipping is is very expensive. We have uh, partnered with a company called Bongo International, and that just started this month. What that is, it's a place that international folks, and many of them are already members of Bongo or are familiar with Bongo, you become a part, you actually sign up for an account with Bongo, and that is kind of like PayPal, where you have an account with them. And then you can shop on our site, choose anything you want, and you will only be charged domestic shipping. And that, that means American um, shipping rates, because when you sign up with Bongo, what they do is they give you a U.S. shipping address. So when you place an order on our system, our system sees that as a domestic shipment. So you only pay domestic prices for international shipments. And you set up your account with Bongo however that you want to. I think you can use this system to uh, shop on many different vendors. We're partnering with them for our site. So if you are an international customer, we do have all this information on the site. It's on the lower left-hand side of every page. Just go to that Bongo site and read about it and see if that might be something that you might be interested in. We think you'll find it. It will really help you with international shipping. We're always looking for ways to help our international customers. We welcome and look forward to helping them and to shipping to every country. So please take a look at our new service called Bongo International. We have one of my favorite segments on Horses in the Morning. It's the Weekly Horse Health Report, and that's with thehorse.com. Today we have Michelle Anderson, who's the digital editor of thehorse.com, and she's going to be talking with Dr. Jones. Today's topic is, as Glenn says, <laughs> lameness diagnosis. Uh, seriously, lameness is like the bane of every horse person's existence. So we're going to talk to, uh, or we're going to listen in as Michelle and Dr. Jones discuss um, diagnostics for lamenesses. Lamenesses. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you know, I have two lame horses um, on my property right now. It really is something. They have four legs, and things can go wrong with each one of their legs. It's what I've learned. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, it's, and many other parts, too. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. But that's, when, when your vet says, well, the reason you can't tell what leg he's lame on is because he's lame on all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, and that's been my recent experience. So, Dr. Jones, are you with us? Yes, I am. I'm here. Sorry to hear you have your um, horse has crippled all four legs, huh? I, I, yeah, thank you. Do you have a chart on the wall, Dr. Jones, that shows, okay, uh, crippled in one leg is, is $1,000. Crippled in two is 2000 Do you have charts like that on the wall? Yeah, and it says crippled in three and a half legs, shoot him. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. Just joking. <laughs> oh, only a vet could say oh. that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but so this topic, it was something that Dr. Jones was excited about talking about lameness diagnostics. And I think he has a story to share with us. So Dr. Jones. Yes, I do. And, uh, you know, I, 
I um, haven't quite figured it out. Maybe there's some better practices and, and bigger practices have quite figured out or maybe savvier receptionists have figured out how to get clients to get to the root of what the situation is. So I had a client come in a few weeks ago, a fairly savvy client with their horse. They've been in horses for a while, and they scheduled their appointment for an ultrasound on a horse that I've never seen, or I saw once for vaccines. They just acquired the horse. Horse has been in training. I saw them two weeks prior for another horse of theirs, and they said, well, their trainer said the horse had popped a splint. So when two weeks later came and they had that same horse that supposedly popped the splint in for an ultrasound, I thought, why are we ultrasounding a pop splint? Okay, so for those of you who don't know what a pop splint is, the splint bones, which is basically metacarpals and metatarsal bones in the front and back legs, are little tiny toothpick-looking type bones on either side of the cannon bone. And if they get interfered with by a foot or kicked at by another horse, they can make this nice, ugly, hard, firm growth. And when they do that, um, they tend to be a little bit sore and painful initially, and then it uh, cools off and reorganizes itself and looks fine um, unless it's fractured. Now, I, I looked at the horse, and it told me at ultrasound, usually you would x-ray something bony, and I don't even see this big, large bony thing. So then they said, well, something about the suspensory ligaments being pinched and, again, getting into a pop splint if they're big enough and bilateral, you can, you know, both sides of the cannon, you can sometimes pinch down the suspensory ligament that's between them. But I'm palpating the ligaments and they all seem fine. So I said, let's trot the horse. Okay, now we're into an alemus exam. So I think what the root of this discussion that I'm bringing up is, is the clients really don't know that if there's a problem with the horse, it starts with a lameness exam. Even if it's a popped splint or a suspensory being squeezed or injured, you wouldn't want to call and just get an X-ray and ultrasound. You'd want to localize it for sure. Where in the suspensory ligament? Because it's a little bit of a length on the backside of the cannon. Is it one of the branches? Um, if there's a mass from this pop splint, you know, it still may include a lameness exam, but it's some sort of an exam. And that's where oh, I hadn't quite figured out how to get the clients to request a lameness exam or how to get the questions out of them of why do they want the ultrasound or why do they want the x-ray because usually that flows into a lameness exam and some of them get a little freaked out saying, oh, that's quite a bit of money. Well, now, Dr. Jones, I have to say, you vet show up and you have all your magic machines that magically tell us what's wrong with our horses, <laughs> right? Well, only if the horse points to the area and says, x-ray this. But that's yes, what that doesn't is, happen. This is what hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't that doesn't happen. We gotta we gotta localize it without them telling us, except for their limping and bobbing heads and you know stuff like that. Yes. So yeah. pain and heat swelling. So well, if it's not know, an I obvious think... pain heat swelling, it's going to involve a lameness exam. And you know, I... more times than not, it's a lameness exam is what they need to just call for, and they need to put aside the time for it. Now this one was really interesting because the first day, yes, this is how a lot of lameness exams go. The first day. We localized it was to the foot somewhere. The second day they came back and we actually blocked the joint and the horse went perfectly sound. So I couldn't do both of those in the same day because I had to let the one block wear off and come back and do the other block all by itself to localize the specific joint it was um, affecting. So I think this is where we horse owners get ourselves in trouble. We can tell our horse is lame, so we kind of go, well, maybe... It, we just need to go forward. Like, we know it's lame. I don't need someone to tell me it's lame. It's limpy. <laughs> but not thinking that we need to have this whole exam to target or pinpoint where the pain or mechanical issues coming from um, in, in our defense. And in barns, we do have trainers or other people, oh, you need to get that ultrasound or sounded or, or that needs x-rays. or So we have a lot of um, peer diagnostics going on. <laughs> In the barn. Oh, and I, I agree with all that because it helps a lot of people know what they're getting into, especially some that are a little bit new to it. But, you know, my concern is, is how can I guide the client to understanding that um, there are 30-minute appointment for an ultrasound or x-ray or 45-minute appointment for ultrasound x-ray is really going to probably cost them, not cost them money, but in time, an hour and a half to two hours and a lameness exam just to get started. Yeah. And, and so that's where um, it's frustration on the client's part comes and the frustration on my part comes because I would want to make sure I give them, you know, full workup and a proper amount of time. 
So um, I recently on my horse with three lame legs, um, I had my vet out and it's hard to not say like, this is what I think it is, or this is what I feel like's going on or, and to step back and say, I just need a lameness exam. I need, we need to start at the beginning. And that's what I did with this because it was so just kind of wacky that I'm, I'm totally lost. You're the vet, you're the expert, let's do a lameness exam. And I had thought that we were going to have to do x-rays and all that stuff, and we actually didn't get that far at the get-go. Like, we're just kind of easing into it, which is actually kind of nice, too. So I I think I would tell everyone out there that if you don't go in and say, oh, we need to do the MRI right out of the gate, you might um, save some money. <laughs> Maybe. Absolutely. And a lot of people might think that because they've had experience with, um, a friend of theirs went and had an MRI done. They were able to pinpoint exactly the problem mm-hmm. and, and all that. So it's yeah, it's kind of amazing when you put all that together and and find out you don't have to spend that kind of money. Um, that's the other thing is not to spend it or spend it. There's a, there's a lot of good diagnostics lately that we can use to figure out what's wrong with the horse. It's just um, people planning for those. Um, I hate to say it, but those uh, insurance companies have really been pretty open now about. Uh, paying for MRIs and paying for nuclear scans. They've been doing that for years. So those are things that people should keep in mind is, um, you know, their premium insurance will come around and help them if they do have a show horse that they're trying to keep sound. So how do you as a vet decide which diagnostic test to use as you're moving through that lameness exam? Well, you know, x-rays usually our first go-to. That's just been standard in in veterinary life for years. The... uh, um, Swelling and heat of a soft tissue injury is pretty obvious. Bowed tendon, everybody knows, or most everybody knows what that is. That's that lump on the back side of the cannon bone. That I probably wouldn't x-ray. I'd probably go straight to an ultrasound on that. The joints um, being affected, like this coffin joint that blocks sound. Um, when I um, injected the coffin joint with uh, lidocaine, it went perfectly sound. We x-rayed the joint because that's a bony problem, a joint problem. And um, if that wasn't going to give us enough information, the next step for that is we could ultrasound that area, and then the next step would be MRI. So that's usually or nuclear scan. The upper end ones are usually after ultrasound and x-ray are utilized on the farm, which makes it more economical for the client. So there's a lot that can be done on the farm still in the right hands. So how does expense play into lameness diagnostics and figuring out what's going on with the horse? Well, let's take your horse, for example, the Mm -hmm. abscessed foot. You knew it was an abscess foot. A lot of my green clients won't. They'll say, I think they broke their leg. Um, you know, some of them might say something's really wrong. They can't walk today. So you get out there and it's abscess. It's one leg. That doesn't take very much time of the practitioner. And really it's based on our time and our knowledge base. So you're, you're charged for a per time, and I hate to make the comparison, like a, a lawyer would charge per time or an accountant would charge per time on their efforts they are doing because it's their knowledge base and, and efforts of helping you. So it's a a per time incident. Now your horse now with three legs that are lame, you will work up the lamest leg, you meaning the veterinarian, will work up the lamest leg first because it's the most obvious to us. And when that one goes sound and the other ones look more lame because now they're the only one that hurts, then you work up the next one. And then when you find out where that one went sound, you work up the last one. So that's going to take quite a bit more time if you think about it and more diagnostics. So if you have a lameness in the right front, let's say, that's more obvious than the left front, and you block it to, block meaning you put the Novocaine in and they go sound and they feel better because they've got a numb foot, you block it to the foot, and also in the left front goes even more lame, and you block that one and it goes also to the foot, and then the back is still lame and it takes you up to the proximal suspensory, you're probably looking at x-raying both front feet and ultrasounding the back. Um, a lot of people at this point, you know, those with um, show horses might say, you know what, I'm going to do a nuclear scan and see what else is affected in, in all the feet because on x-ray, if it's, let's say, a navicular bone or something affecting the heel area of the foot, you may not pick up a lot of changes on the x-ray, but on a nuke scan, you'll see that that navicular bone is going to light up. Or you do MRI on both front feet and you ultrasound the back leg because it was a suspensory ligament. So you're looking at a lot of different modalities. It can get quite costly, or it can be as simple as a couple x-rays and an ultrasound. So I have a friend who is a very knowledgeable horse person, and if a horse is off at all, she says abscess, abscess, abscess every time. Um, I have another friend who thinks everything's a suspensory. So how how do you... 
<laughs> so how do we owners and those of us managing horses, how do we not um, do the chicken little thing that the sky is falling when we go to our vet? Us horse husbands <laughs> always go for the, Come on. Us horse husbands always go for the abscess because it's cheaper. We're, cheaper. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'll tell you it that. Yeah, but we don't have to do the it work. It's a lot of work. We're just worried about the checkbook. So uh, yeah. we're always going for that. Yeah. Well. Doesn't Although, have you out. bought yeah. duct tape and all the supplies to wrap an abscess hoof recently? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the feed store and I get my duct tape and my um, my vet wrap and my elastcon and my gauze and my poultice and the vet or the the guy at the feed store goes, "Oh, I know what you're doing." <laughs> oh, and sixty dollars later. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so your back hurts falling. from bending over, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's really it's it's not easy for us to you know we tell them to to take it easy. It could be that, but there's other things we want to look into that look similar to that lameness. There's a lot of things that look similar when it comes to a lameness, um, and having a good eye for lameness is what you really want to pay for. So you might say, oh, Doctor A charges this much to do lameness exam, and Doctor B charges this much, and A might be a lot cheaper than B. But there might be a difference of 20 years of experience, or there might be a difference of who, who's updated on current uh, their continuing education and has a interest in doing those lameness exams. And then with the new sports medicine um, specialty board certification with letters behind the name, those are always good to look for too. But um, it, some of those will go a lot faster. Some of those lameness works up, workups will go a lot faster, even though let's say, for example, somebody's charging $300 an hour. Throw that number out there, and the young new veterinarian might only charge you $150 an hour, it might take that young veterinarian a full hour to, or a full two hours to figure it out. So now you spent $300 where the experienced veterinarian might find out in half an hour and you only paid $150. So, you know, you kind of have to look into what's going to be um, the best for your animal rather than the best for your pocketbook, I hate to say. Um, so how, and then of course, how do we... Oh, sorry ahead. about that. I was going to say, how do we advocate for our animals without driving our vets crazy? Well, I think those that come and say, my horse is lame and the vet says, no, it's not, are probably the most frustrated, I'll be honest. And those clients that come to me and tell me that, uh, say they've been to a veterinarian and they and the vet, they said, my horse is lame and the vet says they didn't see anything, I really pay attention to the history because it's them riding the horse probably more than you seeing it on the ground is where you're going to see the, the situation. So I have those clients get up on the horse and ride them. I don't think, per se, being a pain for the for the vet is a bad thing. Um, I've got you know clients that will tell me this guy is falling every week, and some of them we handle over the phone because we know we have to do that because there's no really need for us to be out there and see the horse. But more times than not, we'll go because there really is a need to be to see the horse, and um, it may not be uh, the horse is on its death door or it's got a broken leg, but there is something that's starting to brew, and when you nip it in the bud early, you don't have the full-blown um, expense as you would if it was three weeks down the road. So I, I, you know, I'm probably not the best vet to ask that to because I wouldn't say I welcome them to call every every time they get a, um, a hangnail, but I do have a lot of clients that do that, and I kind of welcome the idea of catching things early, and I love that that fact. Um, another quick story is I had a client that called me and said that her horse was lame in the right front. Now we know he's got a ring bone that we've been addressing. He's never been lame on it yet. We've shockwaved it and it's actually changed in formation, looks beautiful. Um, but she did notice the lump that showed, started showing up for ring bone down in the pasturing area. Now she said the horse was lame in the right front. So we both thought ring bone is starting to be a problem. I go out there, and this horse had a big swelling on its chest with a lot of fluid and a and a uh, pocket of uh, a, you know a puncture wound that was draining out. And I said, "Well, it's probably not the foot; it's the chest." So we treated the chest, and uh, so then she called another week and a half later and said, "Oh." horse is lame again, I go out there and there is um, a cut on the left front leg and it's lame on the left front, not the right front. And I said, well, this is the problem. It's not the right front because she's all panicked about the right front. And she's like, but doc, I know there's something wrong with the right front. And I said, well, I can't tell you that today the horse is lame on the left front. She said, it wasn't lame on the left front yesterday. And I said, I'm sorry, today it is. I have to address that. So a week and a half later, so now we're going into this four weeks. She calls me out for the right front lameness. We worked it up to the origin of the suspensory ligament. So this horse had probably an origin of suspensory ligament all along, 
but the poor thing ended up getting a puncture wound and then getting a, a, a swollen knee from a cut on the other leg that delayed our, my evaluation. And that poor horse is probably looking at me going, Doc, it's right here in my right front leg. It's, it's the cannon bone the whole time. But when we're trotting him, he's got other issues. You know, he's got a swelling with pus coming out of it. He's got a laceration. So, you know, we, we can be fooled numerous times and delay the process, but that's because we have to address the most urgent. Yeah. If only they could tell us what they feel. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but I, I really think that, and it helps us vets. And it's funny because I'll tell the students this, the clients will say, look, I don't think I've got an abscess in my horse. I think it's coming from the shoulder. 80% of the horse's lamenesses are in the foot. So mm-hmm. when they say, I think it's coming from the shoulder, I'm looking at the foot. So even all the information you give us does help us. Yeah, but you obviously have to filter some of it out. I think of some of the things I've told my vet, my poor vet. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Dr. Jones. We're sure glad to have you guys so that you can help us figure out what's going on with our horses because lameness is so frustrating, extremely frustrating. Yeah, and they don't even have to call for a lameness exam. They just might say, something's wrong with my horse, I need an exam. Mm-hmm. And, and then the vet can figure it out, you know, from that point on. It's just us scheduling our time appropriately so that we can give the proper amount of time to start up the lameness exam and get through a good portion of it before we'd have to return or to be continued. So that's that's just the hardest part I keep running into is how can I get the clients to, to say to me, you know, we, we've been off for a couple of weeks. Like this, li- this client knew very well that there was lameness, and uh, so I did schedule enough time each time I went out there. So. Well, we on the horse.com, we have a video um, that – goes pretty in-depth into x-rays and what you find uh, using those during a lameness exam. So I'm going to go ahead and post that on our Facebook page. Um, if anyone's looking for other lameness stuff, we have a lot of resources. And we have a lameness newsletter that goes out every Wednesday. So you can sign up for that and get all the new articles that we have related to lameness. So um, lameness is the center of my world right now. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jones. My pleasure. Well, there you go. To listen to more of the Horse.com's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and look for the experts drop down menu on the left. If you love listening to the Horses in the Morning Gang, putting in their two cents on all things horse, you can tune in every weekday at horsesinthemorning.com for fascinating interviews, news stories from around the world, clever contests, and general horsey hijinks. You can have all of the Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go now thanks to our new free app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search for Horse Radio Network. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they really do make these podcasts possible. Today's podcast has been brought to you through the generous support of EquestrianCollections.com. Now with international shipping via Bongo. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.